Shell molding was invented by a German engineer and basically the shell molding is a variation of sand casting process itself. In this process we are using resin along with the pure silica sand and we are going to make use of the metal patterns. The mold cavity is being prepared by forming the thin shells around the patterns using the sand mixed with the resin and the metal patterns. Shell molding has got many applications. It is used for precise components or even it is used for the highly precise components such as water jet ways for the engine block. These are also been used for gear housing cylinder heads and connecting rod. Let's learn that how this shell molding is prepared. So here we are going to discuss about the several steps which are involved in the shell molding. As earlier told the metal patterns are used and sand is mixed with the resin normally. So we make use of thermosetting phenolic resins. 3 to 6 percent will be added to the silica which is free from clay and the silicon grease is been sprayed on the metal patterns in order to remove the shell easily. The next step in the shell molding is the heating of the metal pattern. Normally these patterns are prepared from the grey cast iron. Sometimes even we use non-ferrous metals also. Grey cast iron will give you the uniform heating throughout the pattern and it can be used for several rounds of the shell molding process. The heating will be done up to the 230 degree centigrade to 315 degree centigrade. Once the metal pattern is get heated up then we are going to overturn this dumb box. So the all the sand which is there in the dumb box it will fall on the metal pattern which is already been heated at it to a temperature of 230 up to the 315 degree centigrade. Because of this uh, heat the resin and the sand will become close to each other and there will be a binding will be taking take place and this binding will be stick to the metal patterns. Basically there are two ways of uh, preparation of the cells. The one which I discussed we here is a dumb box method. The another method is that the blow, blow type of the method. So wherein the sand is being blowed on the heated pattern. In the figure it is very clear there is a thin uh, sand will, is glued to the pattern. So in this way a shell is formed around the pattern. So after this uh, pattern along with the thin shell we are going to cure it in a oven. So the oven is heated up to 350 degrees centigrade and it is kept from 1 minute to the fine 5 minutes in order to get the curing for the resin which has been mixed with the sound. Once the curing action takes place now it's time to eject the cell from the pattern. Normally ejector pins are being provided on the metal pattern in order to remove this shell from the patterns. The similarly we have to prepare the another part of the what you call uh, shell also. The point to be remembered here normally 10 to 20 mm thickness of shell we are using and they are having a strength of 2.4 to 3.1 megapascal. So once both the parts of the castings are prepared in the form of a shell. So later we are going to place it in a flask which is filled with the what you call supporting material and at the bottom we use the clamp. So we have to remember here the gating system also should be the part of the cell molding itself. 
so once both the parts are matched and aligned properly the molten metal been poured into the shell mold so once the solidification takes place so we are going to remove this supporting material and we are going to remove the shells out of out of this flask so in order to get the final castings these are the few important points which are related with the shell molding cast iron aluminum copper alloys aluminum magnesium products can be produced with the help of this shell molding so it ranges from 13.5 kg even up to 45 to 90 kg it can use the surface finish what we obtained is 0.4 up to 4 micrometers we can get it so it all depends upon the fineness of the sand which we use it in this process the typical tolerance is 0.005 mm per mm and the resin also assist in forming a very smooth surface so sand resin mix can be recycled by burning of the resin at high temperatures so examples which we already discussed again it has been repeated here these are the advantages of shell molding basically shell molding gives you high productivity low labor cost and good surface finish so this can be achieved if the process is automated for the mass productions shell molding has got one more advantage that when the hot metal comes in contact with the sand which has been mixed with the resin because of the heat the resin which is mixed with the sand get evaporated leaving more permeability for the molding sand any hot gases which are been formed within the molten metal can be easily escaped out of this complex shapes can be prepared with the shell molding so it requires less tooling cost and even it produces the very less sharp uh, scrap very large parts and complex shapes are also can be produced but only thing you have to handle the shells very carefully so as we mentioned earlier many materials we can use it so scrap can be recycled and it takes very short lead time so these are the advantages of shell molding let's look at the disadvantages the gating system must be part of the pattern because the entire mold is formed from the pattern which can be a very expensive process resin for the sand is expensive so equipment required is also costs more so poor material strength we get it in this shell molding high porosity is also possible so secondary machinery is required sometimes so we need to have a skilled labor so these are the disadvantages of the shell molding thank you for watching this video